for waiting around. Uh, a long night, a successful night, and uh, another great performance by the miracle man, Daniel Jacobs. I think what you saw tonight was the difference between a world-class middleweight and an elite middleweight. A beautiful performance, masterclass, out of the ring for eight months. A little bit rusty, but you're not going to see the rust again. Yeah. Already planning the next date for 2018. It'll uh, be announced very, very soon. And I'm going to pass over to the miracle man, Daniel Jacobs, to say a few words. Thank you. Sticking around, uh, I really felt like um, when I heard him in the first round, that was kind of a, a gift and a curse. Honestly, uh, I wanted to go for the knockout, not just because I knew I could hurt him, but because of all the stuff that he was talking, I guess it was just hit me just to stop on the approval point. But in doing that, uh, it, I could have did a little bit better as far as being sharp, but like my promoter said, we've been out the ring for a couple months, and it's only about getting sharp and staying active and making sure that that doesn't repeat itself. Um, much respect to Luis Arias and his team, but I did go out there and prove the point that I wanted to prove, which is that there's level to this game. And uh, he was outmatched, and I knew the, the attributes that I brought to the table, that he wasn't, able, he wasn't able to deal with it, and that's exactly what we showed. Um, I'm looking forward to bigger and better things. The future is very, very bright, uh, even though this – to me, wasn't the best performance. I'm looking forward to having the best performance in the near future. So, thank you guys, all us, and we can go to some questions. Uh, Danny, not sure if you caught the tail end of his post fight, but John Bayden Jackson had a lot to say. He said you were a cruiserweight in the ring, essentially. Uh, and then he made a big deal that you came in, you know, huge, like in, in a whole different weight class than Lewis. I, I know you hate being, you know, getting that accusation post right. the Triple G fight. That's right. been a big thing of you not weighing in on the scale. Can you uh, maybe comment on that? Well, I mean, I make middleweight, and I'm probably the biggest middleweight because I skip leg day. You see my legs, it's, I'm skinny at the bottom and I'm big up top, right? So it's not my fault, that's just the way things work. But I'm just a really big middleweight, and I can make it easy. This camp for me was the easiest. A big shout out to Chris Algeri. This camp was the easiest that I've made 160. I was able to have breakfast the morning of the way in. I was able to feel good and feel strong. I can't help it if I'm a big middleweight. But that's not an excuse for anyone. Because if you're in the elite, then you're elite and you know how to avoid certain shots. And I don't think he was really able to avoid much. I mean, he held and he grabbed and you know he ducked and dodged. But I'm just an elite fighter. It just so happens I'm one of the biggest middleweights in the world. Danny. Danny congrats, yes, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. Arius held a lot. Um, did the referee ever address that? You know, when you see the three guys, because it didn't seem like it to me. Yeah, I think the referee um, he gave him a couple warnings. I would have liked him to give him a lot more warnings, but the referee did a stellar job. No complaints. He was in survival mode from the first round on. Once he got hurt, he was in survival mode, and it's really hard to stop a guy who's like experience with the survival skills. Um, he was grabbing, he was ducking, he was holding, and I really wanted to display my skills and my trainer kept telling me, put your combinations together, start from the body, because that's where he would start when he started holding. I just started a little head hunting a little bit too much, but you know, this is about the experience and I gained a lot more, I gained a lot more experience in this fight than I've done in my previous fights uh, for that reason alone. Danny, was he better defensively than you thought, or would you not even say that he was being defensive because he was so looking to survive? How do you see yeah, it? I don't think it was. Because when you, you know, there's a difference from being defensive and trying to really survive. I mean, he swayed a couple punches. But like I said, I was really tr aiming to get the knockout. So at times it seems if I was swinging and missing, it's because I was really anxious. But I don't think he was the best defensive guy that I fought. Uh, but he did a really good job at holding and surviving. I give him that. But he didn't pose any threat. Uh, he didn't hurt me at any at any time in the fight. And I was able to see all the shots. You know, He wasn't that fast of a guy. I, I just think I could have done better, but I did think I put on a good performance. A nice, strong 12 rounds for me in getting that experience where people think I'm this huge knockout artist. Um, you know, it just shows my diversity. Danny, were you surprised that he didn't stand in the middle of the ring like he said he was? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> I think he fooled all you guys, too. Like, I think with the, uh, with the lead up and build up to this fight, I think um, you really got, you guys really, as well as I did, thought he was going to stand in the middle of the ring and bang it out. So the first round, my mindset, I was going to be a little precautious and 
kind of, you know, be a little bit more defensive than I normally am. But when I started seeing him going backwards, when I wasn't really posing a threat, I said, okay, I, I see what type of party this is going to be. And it was actually worse than I thought, so. I got two questions here. Danny, first, congrats on the performance. Thanks, Al. And at what, at what point in the fight did you realize, all right, this dude is in a straight survival mode, and I'm really not going to be able to stop. So let me just finish, close the show, you know, win every round comfortably. Um, did you feel that way at any point in the fight? Maybe the second half of the fight, and I knew that um, because I thought that he did, him being uh, inexperienced and going 12 rounds that I might get him in the 11th or 12th or 10th round in the championship rounds. But he was able still to survive, and even though I hurt him a couple times in the fights in the later portion, yeah, and that's credit to my trainer. He uh, told me to go down to the body because every time I go for the head, the guy ducks down and holds, and you know he just did. A, he just had survival skills. I mean, there's nothing I can say about it. I mean. It was just a learning experience. My second question 